It's Bridgen. I am the museum stitcher here on FlossTube and also over on Instagram. And welcome to FlossTube number five. Today is Wednesday, July 20th. I know it's a little bit earlier than I typically uh, make appearances for my two week update, but I'm going to be out of town this weekend. So I needed to film my FlossTube before I left because if I waited, <laughs> there was going to be way too much for me to show you guys in my next one. So I hope you don't mind me being a little bit early, although I don't think you guys will be seeing this until Friday, but what are you gonna do? Um, so again, welcome back. <laughs> if you are a returning viewer, there are now 2,000 of you who have subscribed to my channel. I'm, I'm beyond floored, beyond excited, and I have a very special celebration for my 2K giveaway. Um, but I unfortunately have not finished making it yet because you guys are too good and I hit 2k in the span of uh, two weeks since my last video um, and I have not had enough time to uh, adequately prepare for the giveaway but I will be giving you a sneak peek toward the end if you are interested in seeing what it's going to be. It's going to be fabulous. Uh, and if you're new here, uh, I am a museum professional who cross stitches in a lot of her spare time. And this is my channel where I talk about cross stitch, but also about the other crafts that I do. I'm also a quilter. I'm also a knitter and a crocheter. Today, I do have some knitting to share with you and I have some books to talk about as well. I'm also an avid reader. So I hope you find something you like and that you consider liking and subscribing and following along with my stitchy journey uh, because there's quite a few quite a few people who have already done so. I'm just, I can't, I'm never going to get over it. Okay. I know I say it in every video, but I'm just never going to get over it. So I got a lot to share with you today. I've got an FFO. I have a finish. I have some whips and some haul and everything. So settle in and let's talk some cross stitch. I have an iced tea today. Um, are you even Southern if you don't drink iced tea in a mason jar? No. Okay, so let's get into it. So I have an FFO. This is a very exciting piece that I'm going to be gifting to a friend later this next week, next week. Uh, and I am super excited to share it with you. And here it is. Uh, so this is a birthday present for my friend Dally. Uh, happy birthday, Dally. <laughs> Today, Wednesday the 20th is actually her birthday. I don't think she watches my channel though, which is why I feel safe in sharing this with you guys today. Oh my gosh, my bangs, I swear. Um, so yeah, this is Legendary Girls by Little House Needleworks. I stitched this on a 32 count vintage country mocha linen with all of the called for classic color works, which look, I mean, this, this thing looks amazing. I could not be happier with how it turned out. I started this on January 24th of 2022 and I finished it on April 24th of 2022. This was primarily work lunch stitching for me. So, I mean, it took that long because it was like 30 minutes every day, just Monday through Friday. Oh, it looks, it looks so cool. And this is just a standard nine by 12 frame that I got off of Amazon and it matches the variegation in that blue color, which I think is St. Bernard. Don't quote me. Uh, it, this thing looks freaking fantastic. Like I really want to keep it for myself, but <laughs> I know Dally is going to love it and I can't wait to gift it to her, but I'm glad it got to make its floss tube appearance before it went. I'm going to be taking some nicer pictures of it for my Instagram and I will get that posted once I gift it to her because I think she does follow me on the Instagram, but yeah. So happy birthday, Dally. <laughs> she loves, um, I, this quote just reminded me a lot of her and I had so much fun stitching on it and I feel like my framing job is getting a lot better like it's not I mean it's not perfect but it's pretty it's pretty good I got it laced in the frame and uh this is my first time actually working with matte board and it's really not that bad I I definitely prefer it and so I cut it down myself and laced it and stuck it in the frame and was able to get the factory included back on it which is very nice so that is Little House Needleworks Legendary Girls um actually I think it's technically by Tumbleweeds, but Tumbleweeds is a division of Little House Needleworks, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why I keep saying Little House Needleworks. And uh, it says, I figure if a girl wants to be a legend, she should just go ahead and be one. So gotta love that. Uh, yeah, 
that is a very special FFO. I'm very happy to have it done. I, I just finished that, fully finished it last week. Uh, but it's been sitting in my needs to be fully finished pile for a really, really long time. So I'm, I'm working on getting that, that pile down to zero, but we'll see. And then I had a finish. Um, okay. So I know in my last video that I said, I wasn't going to do any new starts in between my last video and this video, but it doesn't count if I finished it. Right? So this is technically a new start and a finish. So a SAF, if you will start and finish but I'm just going to go ahead and say it doesn't count. This is the Stitchers RSVP by Alicia Paulson. I saw this from Jess at Little by Piku and when she posted it, I knew I had to have it and I wasn't planning on starting it, but then there was a whole group of Stitchers who were starting it with the hashtag I'm not coming stitch along that started Friday, July 15th. And I figured if I had the pattern and I was able to kit it up from my stash, I would participate. And lo and behold, I was able to kit it up for my sash. So I basically stitched monogamously on this for four days and it was done. <laughs> so I think I'm the first person to finish the stitch along, um, but it's very exciting. So without further ado, here it is. <laughs> and it says, listen, <laughs> I still want to be invited, but I'm not coming, which I totally, totally like I, I am this quote. Okay. I am this quote. Uh, this is on a piece of 28 count even weave in the shade Spring Court by Fangirl Fibers. I'm part of her A Court of Thorns and Roses Fabric of the Month Club, and this was one I think from April, if I'm not mistaken. And when I got this piece of fabric in the mail, I thought it was beautiful. I mean, it's this gorgeous bright green spring teal. I had no idea what I was going to stitch on it. I figured it would just kind of sit in my stash forever until there was a mirabilia that looked good on it. And uh, when I saw the pattern, the called for is like a much more deep teal, but I thought this would look good and I tried it and it looks, I think it looks pretty great. So I did make a few changes for the pattern. So let's talk through those before we move on. Um, but I did start this on the stitch along day, July 15th, and I finished it on July 18th. So so this is a pretty quick stitch for me. So changes wise, here's what I did. I changed the cat. So the cat is called for to be like a dark brown and uh, almost black. And I changed her to look like my cat Fraser. I will insert a picture of Fraser here. Um, I have two cats and one of them is an extrovert and one of them is an introvert. So I put my introverted cat on here. Um, and it turned out pretty dang great. My cat's not that stripey in real life, but I just followed the, the planned variegation on the pattern. And I think it, it turned out just fine. I'm happy with her. I also changed the colors on these little spools here. So I just basically pulled from the called for, uh, this is like charted to be in a tan Brown. And this is charted to be in like that limey green that's on the interior of the leaves, but I just changed them to be my favorite colors in the called for. So the blue and the pink, um, there's a little teapot that's called for. I changed the scissors a little bit. So I made the handle out of um, one of the golds. Again, I just flipped through the called for and pulled out something that I liked. Um, the pins on the tomato pin cushion, their heads are called to be in French knots. I just pulled some Mill Hill beads from Stash. I know it's kind of blowing it out on camera. It's very hard to see the little back stitches that are the pins, but they're there, I promise. Um, and then I did pull the house in one stitch on either side. So the roof overhangs. I like an overhanging roof on my pieces. And then I changed the color of the wording. It's called for to be in like a very, very pale, pale pink. But when I stitched it, I couldn't read it. I couldn't see it. So I changed it to be the same brown as the house. And I think that's everything I changed. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this, this stitch was super fast. It's super cute. Uh, so I do have a question for you guys. I need you to vote down below, let me know finish it as a flat fold or as a drum? Because I could go either way, honestly. Um, and also let me know if you've ironed pieces that have beads on them, how do you do that? Because this is my first fully or fi finished piece that has beads on it and I don't quite know how to iron it, which is why it's not ironed for you. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. But this was a super fun stitch. Um, the, the stitch along, I mean, it just started. So if you are interested in picking this piece up, I will link it down below. I usually 
fill out my description box pretty well based on what I'm showing. So feel free to check that out and go check out all the other stitchers who are working on this piece. I'm super happy I participated, even though I told myself no new starts. My whip number did not change in between last video and this video, so I'm still calling it a win. Okay, so that is everything I finished. No other new starts besides that one that I finished. And I do have a few whips to share, so let me grab those. I have not picked up this piece in probably a few days since I started the Stitchers RSVP, so I'm not quite sure how much I got done on this because it's been more than a couple days since I worked on it. But this is Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor. This is a stitch along that I am hosting with the Seattle Stitcher and uh, also Alexis at My Amazing World. It is the hashtag Summer Quakers Sal with two S's. I totally forgot to say the hashtag in my last video, so I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm doing mine on a 28 count uh, coastal linen by Picture This Plus with all of the called for Valdani threads, which is super fun. I love the way this fabric is looking with this piece. I wanted it to like scream summer because the called for is truffle, which is like a pinky nude. Uh, so let's see. I have no idea where I was <laughs> the last time I showed you guys. I think I had maybe finished these. I think I finished this large motif here. I added in these and I started over on this motif and I finished these guys. I want to say that's right. I'm on track to work on this some more in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'd still like to get half of this piece done before the end of August. So this is going to be a focus piece for August for me. I just kind of got derailed by the Stitchers RSVP. But this is a complete page finish minus a little bit of this motif that is down here, but I'm not quite ready to start that yet. I'm working my way over to the side and then I'll come back down. This is such a fun stitch. If you're interested in joining the stitch along, we don't have any like hard dates. We haven't like mapped out where we're gonna be when. <laughs> we're not holding ourselves to any kind of finishing date or anything. It's really more of a start along, so. Use the hashtag, share your progress with us. Just remember if your Instagram is private and you use the hashtag, we won't be able to see it. Just a little bit of a disclaimer, but that's a super fun stitch that I am really, really loving. And I am looking forward to starting Autumn Quakers in the, the next little bit. Okay, so what else did I work on? Ooh, okay, let's talk about this one. I pulled out a piece for the 13th of the month, which is uh, there's a very popular hashtag going around, uh, Dark 13 Stitching, where you pull out your Halloween pieces on the 13th of every month. Because, you know, 13 is a spooky number, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and I pulled out my Nevermore by Lila Studio. This is my only current Halloween whip, so it gets FaceTime every month. And I'm doing the Forbidden Fiber Company conversion of this piece. Uh, so they kitted it up for me, and it's working out great. So... This is on a piece of 40 count morning mist by Forbidden Fiber, which is such a cool fabric. And the last time that I shared this piece with you, I had this top border finished. So I got to start in on a new color, which is very exciting because this border took for freaking ever. So I got to pull out, I think it's called Old Penny. And I got a good, I know it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot of stitches in here. The stitches are tiny and they're dense. So I think it's looking really cool and I'm super happy to be like moving along on this piece. This needle minder is new. It is from Mad for Minders and it's super fun. So yeah, this is just one night of progress. I'm just chugging away on this piece and hopefully it won't be my only Halloween whip for long now that I'm finally feeling good about it. But I started this on Halloween day of 2021. So I haven't had this in my whip pile for very long. Yeah, so that's never more. That was my a little bit of Halloween stitching. I'll probably pull this out again on the 31st of the month, just because, you know, Halloween's on the 31st. So get a little bit more face time in on that piece. I really like this whole working on seasonal projects on the day of the celebration of that holiday. I think that's kind of fun. So like working on Halloween pieces on the 31st of every month, working on Christmas on the 24th and 25th, you know, things like that. Uh, I pulled out one of my Christmas whips for Christmas in July stitching. So I 
uh, I shared on my last video that I was having a little bit of a crisis on my big ha Halloween, on my big Christmas piece, which is the Days of Christmas Samplers by Hello from Us Matthews. But I do have one more Halloween piece, or wow, I'm gonna do that the whole time, aren't I? One more Christmas piece in my stash. So I decided to pull out the uncomplicated Christmas piece and work on that for a little bit. So this is Glendon Place Woodland Wonder. And I got some good progress on this one. So here is where I'm at. This is stitched on a 32 count vintage country mocha linen with all of the called for DMC, Krynik, and Mill Hill. And since you have seen this, I, or last time you saw it, I had this first antler done and I came in and started working on this whole second antler and I got almost the entire body of the deer mapped out in half stitches so that I can go in and just fill in the deer. Let me see if I can fold this to make it a little bit easier to show. Yeah, so you can see they're just little half stitches, but his whole little body is sketched out and I can just start filling him in. It's very exciting to see him show up on the piece. Gives me a better idea of what its finished size is going to be. I, I know I should have finished the antlers before moving on to the deer, but I needed a break from the Krynik, okay? I just did. But he is going way faster than I expected. I actually think I might be able to get him finished before Christmas of this year, which would be very exciting. This is another new Mad for Minders needle minder. I got a few more to show you later if you're interested. So I just got in, I think, two days of stitching on this. Don't quote me on that though, but I started this Christmas day of 2021. I might've already said that. I'm losing my mind a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's my Christmas in July stitching. I don't know if I'm gonna pull this out again before the end of the month. It, I mean, it's sad that my Christmas in July stitching was only two days on one piece, but it is what it is, y'all. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I do have some information on my Hello from Liz Matthews piece to share with you later if you're interested. So then I pulled out a project I haven't pulled out in a little bit for one day's worth of stitching, but I did get a good chunk of it done. This is Bushel and a Peck by Lottie Da. I'm stitching this for my mom because uh, this little song is super special to her. And here's where I'm at. So I'm stitching this on a 40 count Mallow Linen by Zweigart. And I started this piece on... May 3rd of 2022 and I'm working on color completing actually so the last time that you saw it I just had I had all of the green finished the words finished and this flower finished uh, but I went through and finished out all of the red so this is Forbidden Fiber Company's Holly Holy uh, I am doing a partial conversion uh, just from what I had in my stash so the green and the brown are called for DMC's but I changed the gold to be a different DMC and the red is now Forbidden Fiber Company Holly Holy. So I color completed all of the red and now I am working on the gold and then I will go in and finish the border on the piece. So I'm getting pretty, pretty close on this one. I think if I like made this a focus project for a week, I could have it done, which would be super exciting, but I don't quite know how I'm going to FFO it yet. So, but I love these little swirls starting to show up and having all the little fl flowers done. And I got, you know, I only had two flowers done before or the last time you guys saw it. So I was able to get all of those flowers done in one night, plus that little curly cue. So that's Bushel and a Peck. That is my second to last whip to show you. I just have one more and it is right here. So I did a little bit of stitching on my Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. And this piece I had started last week. No, not last week. I started it. It was a new start in my last video. I'd only worked on it for like a day at the point in which I showed it to you. So I got a little bit more stitching done on this one, but nothing too crazy. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I am stitching this on a... 46 count porcelain linen by Leo and Roxy with the Leo and Roxy conversion of flosses. I have that linked down below if you're interested and here's where I got to. So when you saw this last, I really only had the border finished. So I went through and finished all of the leaves and I'm starting in on the pink in the strawberries. So the strawberries are two toned. They've, you've got like a more raspberry color and then a lighter color underneath. 
So this is the raspberry color and I'm almost done with it. So I flipped this over into an eight by eight Q-snap because the entire page fits on an eight by eight Q-snap, which is nuts. I mean, this piece is huge. It's like 250 stitches square, but because it's on a 46 count, it's super, super tiny. And so I was able to do, I think this is like 80 or 90 stitches across, which is nuts. But it's kind of nice because, you know, it's just one little small Q-snap to hold while I'm doing an entire page, which is super, super convenient for me. Uh, but there is going to be a lot of leftover fabric on this one. I just haven't cut it down yet. So, yeah, there's there's this one. I only did about, I think, two days of stitching on this in the last two weeks. So nothing too, too major. Uh, and this one I started on July 8th, if you're curious. So that's Rejoice Evermore. Here, I'll show you the flosses if you're curious. I love these. They're so pretty. So here are all of my Leo and Roxy Flosco flosses. And I have them on my Adam Heart Thread Heart, Adam Heart Cross Stitch Thread Hearts. They are my favorite floss drops in the entire world. And I love them. So yeah, I've got them on a ring in my bag. And I need to put some more stitches in on this one. Unfortunately, I won't be traveling with it because I'm not crazy enough to travel with a 46 count linen. Um, if I did, I'd have to wear my very, very attractive headgear magnifiers. And I don't think people want to see me wear those on an airplane. So I am still working out what I'm going to take on the plane with me stitching wise. Uh, but we can talk about that a little bit later in the video. So those are all of my whips. So I do have a little bit of haul. We will do, okay, let's, plans for the rest of the video. We're gonna do haul. I've got a little bit of knitting to show you if you're interested. I've got some books to talk about and then I will give you a sneak peek of my giveaway. So that's gonna be the order. <laughs> We're gonna stick with that now. So let me grab my haul. Ugh. So basically how I keep myself organized for my floss tube videos is I have this bucket and every time I get a piece of haul, it goes in the bucket until I film and once I film, I empty the bucket and that's how this works. So I've got everything in my bucket to show you guys. So first thing I got, teeny tiny baby scissors. <laughs> I got these to take on the airplane with me because the blade is super, super tiny and they've got this nice little silicone sleeve that isn't, I can't lose it because it's attached to the scissors. So I got these in like a three pack from Amazon. I want to say I saw these mentioned on X's and Ho's floss too, but I, I could be wrong. So I got some of those for the plane because if they take them away from me and throw them away, I won't be sad. Okay, I need, I need a tea break. Okay, then I got some more floss drops from Adam Hart Cross Stitch. Some of these might be for a giveaway. Um, so I got two packages of their Thread Bobbins in the shade Milky Way, which is this really pretty iridescent glittery purple. Um, these are going to be for my Chatelaine because I'm going to be making a Tiger Lily Project Keeper for all of my floss bobbins to go into for that. And I don't have a whole lot of extra floss bobbins because I typically buy the hearts when I buy from her because I prefer how the hearts lay on the floss rings. But to go in my Project Keeper, I have to have the bobbins and not the hearts. So I bought some of those. I bought some of the clear frosted thread bobbins for my giveaway. So these guys are actually gonna be going to you, but you know, they couldn't travel alone. Then let's talk color and cotton because I do have quite a bit of things from color and cotton. So um, let's do that. So I got, they just announced that they are doing gradient sets. So they are going to pick a color, I think every month or so, and they are going to do five shades of that same color to where you can buy the little pack. So this month is teal. And of course they released this on the same day that I posted on my Instagram story that teal was my favorite color to stitch with. So um, there is going to be a piece that calls for this. Um, I'm thinking a really pretty ink circles mandala would look really fun with this gradient of color. I mean, these are, they're absolutely stunning. And then I got a whole bunch of greens from Color and Cotton. These are just from their regular collection. I'm working on doing a Color and Cotton conversion for Blackbird Designs Christmas Garden. And so I needed a whole bunch of their greens just to see what tones I liked. So I got some of those. And then I have my, ah, here it is. 
my July thread of the month club. So if you don't want spoilers for your July thread of the month club, look away. I will tell you when it's safe to look again. I get three ske skeins. Wow, I totally forgot how to say that word. Of primitive neutral and then the all color. So here are the primitive neutrals. Super, super pretty. And then the all colors are very on theme for the month of July. And I believe Cardinal is one of their new permanent collection colors. So you safe to look now if you don't want to, if you didn't want spoilers, but those were all the threads that I got from Color and Cotton this month. I'm very excited to work on my Blackbird Designs conversion. I really, really can't wait to see how that's going to look. Then I got some stuff from Tiger Lily Designs. You guys know how much I love Carrie and her channel and she had her Project Keeper release for the month of July and I had to hop on and buy one. I was really curious to kind of see how hers differed from the one that I made myself and see if there were any like things I could learn about how to make these. <laughs> um, and this is the one I got. So I was working when these were released and so I didn't get a chance to hop on when they first got announced. And so I was really doubtful that there was going to be any left, excuse me, that I wanted. Um, cause I wanted the ones with the bobbin pockets and luckily this one was still there and blue floral is my absolute favorite fabric. So, I mean, this is absolutely stunning. So I put a snap closure on the one that I made for myself because I didn't have any Velcro and I didn't feel like buying any, uh, but hers has the Velcro closure, which I've got to say it's, it's pretty nice. And this is the interior and you can see, I just threw in a little Adam Hart floss bobbin to make sure that they fit, but this fabric is stunning. I am absolutely obsessed with it. I can't wait to put some stuff in this and start working from it. And then I got one of her floss keepers. And now this is really interesting because it doesn't have the zipper pocket side. It's just bobbin slots. But I figured this would be really, really good for a project that has more flosses than the 24 that fits in the keeper. So I picked up this as well. And then Carrie was super, super kind. And she sent me a little note and she sent me some uh, Tiger Lily project cards. And I'm really excited to fill these out. If you haven't seen these, go check them out. But they're little cards that you fill out and you can stick in your project bag and it keeps track of everything that you have. And she might have given me some to give to you guys too. Totally crazy. So I, I'm like super floored and super, super happy with these. And I don't know if there's any left, uh, but if you're interested in seeing more Project Keepers, go check her out. She does a release, I think every month or every couple of months. Uh, then I got some stuff from rebel stitcher so colleen messaged me after my last video and let me know that there was some 46 count available in her shop uh for those of you who don't know i am looking to change my christmas days of christmas piece from a 32 count one over one to a 46 count one over two because i'm not loving the one over one stitching it's just not my favorite uh, and so she let me know that she had a couple cuts of fabric that she thought might work. And so I went and bought them because I figured if they don't work for this piece, they'll work for something else. And I've been wanting to try X2 Designs fabric for forever. So I got a fat half of 46 count sampler khaki. This fabric is so freaking cool. I haven't done a floss toss of it yet. I'm still waiting. I have another fabric option for that piece coming from Top Knot Stitcher. And so I'm still waiting for that to come in before I make my final decision. But this fabric is so freaking soft. I, I'm obsessed with how it looks. It's definitely not something I would have picked out for myself, but I could totally see it working. So um, I will do like a big, I'll unwrap it and show it when I decide my days of Christmas piece. And then I also got a fat half of Marbled Bunny, also from X2 Designs, which is a really gorgeous, just light gold. It'll work for everything. So I was super happy to buy those. Um, and then I also got a needle minder from Colleen to go with them. And it's just, it's Superwoman, Wonder Woman, and Bat, Batgirl, Batwoman, Batgirl. Anyway, that's what I got from Colleen. I also have one more cut of fabric from her, but I will show you that when I show you what I've kitted up in the last couple of weeks, because I did kit two things. So I will talk about that later. I got my auto ship from Top Knot Stitcher, which is the Year in the Woods series. I get this from her every month on auto ship. And this month is the Barn Owl. I'm freaking obsessed with this guy. I think he's so cute. 
and the new one in the series just got announced and he's the woodpecker i cannot wait for him i think he's so fun so i got those super excited to start them i got a few needle minders from mad for minders because of this guy does anybody else know <laughs> penelope pitstop or is it just me am i having a nostalgia moment on my own this girl's Penelope Pitstop. I watched her as a kid all the freaking time. I I don't know if this is a weird reference. I'm 24. I watched her as a kid. I don't know if she was only ever on in the early 2000s or not. Anyway, I'm obsessed with her. When she announced that she had a Penelope Pitstop needle minder, I had to go on and grab some. So in addition to that, I got one of my favorite paintings ever, which is a little reproduction of a Kaibot. I got a mason jar with some Christmas stuff, this little winter pinup situation, this antique girl doing stuff, and this really cool heart with flowers. So those are my needle minders that I got. Like, I need more, <laughs> but you know what? Whatever. And, uh, oh, also with my Top Knot Stitcher Shop thing, I got some of these little scissor sheaths that are cat paws. They're super cute. Okay, then I got, I got some charts from 123 Stitch and some other stuff from 123 Stitch. So this is a whole thing. So first of all, I got Wintertide Cardinal by Artful Offerings. I saw this originally back in December on Tiger Lily Designs channel um, and I wanted something smaller for Christmas. I have so many big patterns that I've been looking to kind of beef up my smalls and this is only like a hundred stitches square or something. Yeah. So I'm super excited to start him closer to the winter time and have something small to work on. And then I got a chart from Blackbird Designs that I've been eyeing for a while. This is Midnight Watch. I got it for the cat. And I'm going to be doing a conversion of this, just the stuff I have in stash. I think my leftovers for my Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews would look really nice on this. I just, I think it's a really cool pattern. And I'd like to finish it as a cool little Halloween drum or something. So I got that. But the main reason that I placed an order on 123 Stitch is I needed some murky. And I needed some murky for my um, Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio that I'm going to be starting this Halloween season. Called for on that is a 40 count murky. And I got in my 40 count murky. And it it's not looking the same on camera. But in person, straight up green and mocha brown. I have a better picture of what it looks like. I'm not happy with it. I think I just got a weird cut of murky. But I was talking with a Seattle stitcher and she also got some murky from 123 Stitch and she's having the same issue. So I think I'm going to save this for a Christmas piece. Um, so hashtag spooky Christmas. <laughs> so anyway, I needed to pivot because I need some fabric for my Halloween Quaker and I wasn't going to do this. I think murky is a really cool idea of a fabric. I just think I got an off cut. I don't like it. I don't want to stitch my piece on this because it's so brown and all of the called fours are so black and gray. I just, I don't think it's going to look right. So we're 86ing this, but I'm going to keep it in my stash for something else because I, I do agree with Megan. I think it will look good as a Christmas fabric. So I have all the called for threads that I got from 123 Stitch at the same time that I got that murky. But I got some other fabric options, so I figured I'd show you guys and see what you thought I should do because I'm I'm curious and you guys are a really good um, sounding board for me. So here are all the Codfer flosses. I have two fabric options that I thought would be kind of cool. One I got from Colleen at Rebel Stitcher. This is Midnight Ride by X2 Designs. I know this fabric is loud and crazy and it it's not necessarily what you would think of for a piece like Halloween Quaker, but I think it could look really cool. So that's option number one, out of my comfort zone, not usually what I would pick, but I think it could be really, really neat. Option number two is the safer option, and this is a 40 count dovetail by Forbidden Fiber Company. It is a very light gray lilac kind of a color. My one concern with this is that my ghosts won't show up, but anyway, so you have safe and fun, and called for classic colorings. I don't know. I, I can't decide yet. If you guys think something would look cool, let me know. But I had both of these in my stash, so I figured uh, one of those would work for it. So I haven't made the decision. I have got some time before I have to make that decision because Heather, the 20 minute stitcher and I aren't starting this for another little chunk of time. 
but yeah, that's Halloween Quaker all kitted up and ready to go. So speaking of the weird cut of murky, I had also gotten a little tiny chunk of 32 count murky for another chart that I had bought. Now this chart is the Nebby Needle Witching Time of Night. Uh, like I said, I've been trying to work on getting some smalls that I like. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the glare of the ring light, but this pattern is super small. It's just that one little quote and the little witch silhouette over the moon. So I thought, you know, 32 count murky would look great for that. It's it, it brown. So what I did is I probably committed a no-no and I dyed over my piece of murky with my writ dyes at home. And this is what I got. So, okay, so here's the picture of what the murky looked like first. I put it in some writ dye of just purple and pearl gray. And here's what it came out to look like which looks so much more Halloween spooky. I mean, you can see like the little bits of purple modeling. It didn't erase the brown undertone completely, but it spookified it a little bit. And I think this is going to look really, really cool now. So um, I probably wouldn't advise dyeing over your over dyed fabric because I mean, you paid for the over dye, right? But this was just a little eight by 12 cut of Picture This Plus. And I figured if I screwed it up, I could throw it away or dye it black or something but it turned out really really cool so this is now kitted up and ready to go with this witching time of night piece I think it's going to look really really cool and uh, I will be starting this probably in October for Halloween like I said I need some more smalls and this fit the bill so there is that and I kitted up one more thing if you guys are still with me you're the real real champions here uh, but this is the Scissor Sampler by Tell and Emblem. And I've loved this chart for a really, really long time. And I finally got in all the stuff to make it. So I'm, I don't have any plans to start this yet. But I got two fabric options. Again, small cuts of Picture This Plus because I only needed a fat eighth. So this is a 12 by 17 piece of Tyco, which is so cool. And then I also got Vellum, which is a little bit more warm. So... I haven't decided which one I'm going to do yet. I'm thinking I'm leaning toward the Tyco. And then I got all of the called for flosses. So it's all DMC with a few weeks. So I've done a floss toss on both of these and I honestly think they both look really, really good. And whatever I don't use, I will find another piece to stitch on it because both of these fabrics are super neutral. So they'll work for anything. So I got that kitted up and ready to go. I think Alexis My Amazing World is gonna be hosting a stitch along for that piece. So I might start that, I might not. With that haul section, I have an announcement. <laughs> I am doing a no buy for the month of August with my friend Megan the Seattle Stitcher. We're holding each other accountable for it. No purchases in the month of August. So yeah, that being said, I have placed a lot of orders in July. So if stuff comes in, I'll be able to show it to you, but I am not actively purchasing anything for the month of August. I am also doing no new starts for the month of August. I'm going to focus on my whips and see if I can turn out a couple of finishes in the month of August. And I will be back to starting things in September. So those are a couple of my little personal goals for the next little chunk of time. That being said, I am visiting an LNS in Arizona on Friday. So I'm going to be making some purchases. It's going to be happening. But after that, <laughs> no more purchases. Um, okay, so that's everything stitching related. I do have a couple floss tubes to tell you about. So I started watching Sarah Stitchy Spot. She's a new floss tuber, only has one video out, but she is absolutely precious. I loved her video. She just finished the Tudor B by the Blue Flower love that piece and she did I think a Vicky Clayton silk conversion which is super cool and unique looking I'm very excited to start that piece and it's making me want to work on it more <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have to put that on the back burner obviously with the whole no new starts situation so go check her out if you haven't already her channel is growing really really fast so you might already know about her but if you don't go check her out and then I wanted to shout out a channel that I've been watching for a really really long time like way before I started my own channel and it's Frizzy Lizzie Stitches Elizabeth is fantastic. I love her vibe, her energy, her stitching. She just, she, she's fantastic. So go check out Lizzie if you haven't already, or <clears throat> Elizabeth, I'm sorry, if you don't want your nickname to be Lizzie. Her channel is absolutely fabulous, and I very much enjoy watching her videos when she turns them out. So those are the two floss tube channels I wanted to tell you about. I got a little bit of knitting to show you, <clears throat> a couple of books to share, and then 
I'm out of here. I gotta go um, pack for my trip and figure out what I'm doing. Uh, stitching wise, I think I am going to be taking my Miss Bingley's Library by Plum Street Samplers with me. I haven't worked on that in a little bit, but I, I think I've got a lot of fill in on that project. So I think that's going to be my travel piece. We will see. Okay. So knitting wise. So I haven't talked about knitting on my channel before, and that is because I knitting was my very first craft that I ever learned to love. I learned to knit Probably when I was about nine or 10, my mom and I took a class in the summer together. We are a big mother-daughter crafting team growing up and we cycled through a lot of different things. So uh, knitting was kind of like one of those things that I learned early on. I did a lot growing up, but I never really advanced past the beginner stage. So I knit a lot of scarves and blankets and that's about it. I knit pretty much exclusively scarves and blankets. So I never learned how to like knit in the round, how to knit more complicated things, etc., etc. So I have two yarn whips that I started back in 2020 that I have not finished. So I pulled out one of the ones that I had been working on for a while because I've been stitching so much that I've, I'm starting to get hand pain. And so I needed a project to shift between stitching and something else to give my hands a bit of a break from the pinching of the needle. And I turned back to my knitting and I gotta say my knitting bat, my knitting bug might be back for the first time in a few years, which is very exciting. So the project that I've been working on, I started this in October of 2020 and this is the Cadence Color Block Cowl by All About Ami. Uh, I love her patterns. She's got a lot of free patterns, which makes her pretty easily accessible. And here's what it looked like. <laughs> This is, so you knit it flat and then you seam it together. So it's a pretty long cowl. So up until I picked this up, I had finished half of it. So the way that this cowl works is you knit eight sections of color in just a plain garter stitch. And uh, you knit the two same colored sections together in the line so that when you wind it up and fold it over, the gray lays on top of the pink. And it's a little confusing, but it, it makes sense when you finish it <laughs> that you're not alternating the color. So I've got three colors of Lion Brand Wool Ease. This is a, a level four weight yarn, super easy accessible, and it's very squishy and soft. It's an acrylic wool blend. So uh, in the last basically week, I finished this gray section and this other cream section. So I now just have the rest of this cream section, one more gray section, and one more cream section, and then I can seam it together and it will all be done. So I picked up this project because it is, it's color block, so you don't have to follow a pattern, you don't really have to think about it. It's really great for mindless knitting. And I wanted to teach myself how to knit continental styles. So I have been working on this back and forth between my normal English style throwing my yarn and continental style picking. So I, you can see I, I've got some tension issues starting here because apparently as a continental knitter, I am much more tight in my tension than I am as an English knitter. So I'm working on getting my tension back under control, but because I've been kind of getting back into knitting, I've got a new sweater pattern that was recommended to me by my friend, the Seattle Stitcher, who has been giving me a lot of helpful knitting tips as I've been getting back into the craft. So thank you, Megan. I know I've been bothering you a lot. Uh, but I bought some new needles, <laughs> so let's talk about those. So these are the Chagos Interchangeable Lace Knitting Needles. They come in a set like this, and you get everything you need to make any knitting project ever. So you can see all the needles come in this nice little book, and then all the cables are in this little front pocket along with some stitch markers and other stuff. I went to a local yarn store for the first time ever that wasn't like a Joann's or a big box store and I was able to try out a bunch of different styles of needles in my hands. West 7th Wool in Fort Worth is an amazing yarn, sto yarn store. Go check them out if you haven't already. Um, I bought these from them and I was able to walk away with them same day which is super nice. So I got some new needles and I got some yarn for a new project. So uh, this is nice but it is super repetitive and I'm starting to get a little bit bored with it. So I'm going to be knitting a sweater. It's going to have some lace on it. And I got some yarn to make a small little lace knit cowl. 
to get my feet wet with lace knitting and to practice helical knitting, which is where you alternate between two skeins of yarn at the same time. So I got two skeins of their house dye yarn, which is called Nevermore. It's this gorgeous light black gray tonal yarn, I guess is what you would say. It's a sport weight and um, it's plenty to finish the cowl. I did keep the ball bands. These come as hanks, but I uh, kicked them up myself last night because I do plan on starting this tonight. I won't be taking this with me because I get really nervous traveling with knitting needles. <laughs> I don't know why I just do. Um, so anyway, and these are really nice knitting needles. I did not want them going anywhere, but that was my little foray back into knitting. I will have some more knitting to show you on my next video as I gear up for starting my very first sweater. But this cowl is getting really, really close to done. And my hands are already feeling better after taking a couple days of a break from stitching, which is basically what I needed knitting to do for me. So I'm super happy with how it's turning out and I can't wait to actually get my hands into that new lace knit cowl because it's going to be my first time working with just wool. I mean in the past I've worked with you know your classic big box store yarns mostly Lion brand but I'm very excited to get back into it. It's something that I've loved for a really really long time. Blah 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 what have you. So books wise I've got two books to share with you and then I'll show you a little sneak peek of my giveaway. So I finished two books in the last two weeks. The first one is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I don't know if I said that right, but I tried. Uh, this book was really, really good. This is a recommendation from one of my friends and I really, really liked it. I did see the murderer coming, but I still very much enjoyed the book. It was a very easy read. It's more of a YA fiction and I don't typically read YA anymore. I was kind of getting a little bit burnt out on it, but this one didn't really bother me. It, I, I liked it pretty well. <laughs> um, and the other book was Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. This book I didn't really get into until toward the end. And once it hit toward the end, I was like fully invested in the book. Uh, also reads a little bit more YA. I don't know if it's intended to be YA or not, but it, personally, that's kind of how I felt as I was going through it, but I really, really liked it. If you're interested, go check it out. I do recommend it. I'm also in the middle of reading The Fiery Cross, but I haven't finished yet, so I'll wait to talk about that. But yeah, that's everything book-wise. Give me one second. I'm going to go grab my giveaway sneak peek and I will be right back. Okay, so giveaway sneak peek if you're interested. Uh, next, my next video, when I get back from Arizona and I have a chance to finish these, I'm going to be giving away two Project Keepers made by me. So these are a Tiger Lily Designs pattern, but I did get special permission from Carrie to give away a couple finished products that I've made. And here's your sneak peek. <laughs> fabric one on the outside and fabric two on the outside. So that's your sneak peek. If you're interested, there's your interiors. Um, if you're interested, like um, and subscribe and I will let you know about the giveaway details in my next video. So if you're excited and you've made it to this point in the video, leave me a comment with a blue heart emoji because I'm curious to see if anyone made it this far. All right, that's everything I've got. If you are interested in any of the things I talked about today, go check out my description box. I keep that pretty well updated with links and everything. I will see you guys when I get back uh, with my fun Arizona haul and all of my travel stitching and everything like that. So in the meantime, you guys have a great couple of weeks. Happy stitching and I will catch you next time. Bye!